Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of News 22. I'm Aaron Fitzsimons. And I'm Brian Frankovich. President Obama has worked out a way for military families to receive death benefits during the government shutdown. Fisher House, a private foundation, will supplement the $100,000 payments that arrive within days of a, of a soldier's death. The Department of Defense will reimburse them later. This allows families of fallen soldiers to have peace of mind and still receive all benefits during the shutdown. 89-year-old Leo Sharp of Michigan City, Indiana was busted in Washtenaw County in 2011 with possession of more than 200 pounds of cocaine. When he was stopped by a state trooper, he was distraught and told the man, quote, just kill me and leave this planet. He was a part of a group of 20 people who are under indictment for this crime, and he was said to have transported more than 1,400 pounds of cocaine to Michigan from 2009 to 2011. Sharp is due in court on Tuesday. Police discovered six children in a new London home operating as a drug factory Wednesday morning. They acted on a warrant, and upon searching the home, they discovered more than a pound of synthetic marijuana, real marijuana, liquid codeine, crack cocaine, and other drug paraphernalia, including scales and packaging materials. The four men responsible are facing several charges, including operation of a drug factory. And we'll be back with this week's editorial after this short break. Beautiful, isn't it? You expect options everywhere else. Why not with your medical treatment? Talk with your doctor to explore all your options and find what's right for you. Visit AHRQ.gov. Pants, pants, pants. I am folding the pants. The pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? <laughs> no. They go on Everyday moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. back with this week's editorial. Good evening, I'm Ashley Wolk and I'm here for News 22. Freedom, fairness, equality, justice for all. This is America, right? Land of the free, the civic and the loyal, the just and the holy. America, yes, no, America. A country of disparity, inequality, economic drought and depression. The values of the American democratic system have been so far misrepresented that it's difficult for me to even consider the United States, well, united. Our democracy does not reflect equality, nor does it promote diversity. The America we know is a product of class struggle and capital oppression. We are governed by those who have been given the opportunity to succeed from square one, and it's not fair. Let's take Robert Merton, one of the most pioneering fathers of social inequality known for his modern adaptation of Emile Durkheim's anomaly theory. Anomie is simply the lack of an existing social bond between an individual and their community. Merton revised the theory and condensed Durkheim's work to form what is now known as strain theory. 
String theory says that blocked opportunity equals blocked achievement. Further and more concerning, the means by which one is able to succeed are unfairly distributed between the rich and the poor. Sound familiar? During the civil rights movement, people of color were, were emboldened by Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. There was a mo movement for civil justice, racial, racial equality, and a desire to prove to the white man that he wasn't the superior. Now it seems as though the scale of equality has shifted. What we are witnessing now is a major crisis, a class crisis, far more dangerous than we think. According to Sean Reardon, sociologist professor at Stanford University, a recent survey from, the 2011, from 2011 revealed shocking test score results. In comparing their level of education results displayed a 40% achievement and eligibility gap between high school and low-income families. Compare these results with those from 50 years ago, which studied the race gap between black and white Americans. The class gap is 50% larger than the racial gap. Not only are these students far below the standards of the state, many children who come from low-income families now languish at a rate four years behind their high-income high counterparts. Four years. Minimum wage workers have to choose between paying their gas bill or buying food. The minimum wage is about 20% lower than it was during the 1960s. We have the tools, we have the buildings, we have the money, we have the programs. Why are we failing our children? And don't tell me that it's the inner cities that are the problem. Don't play that card. You want to know what the poorest place in the world is? Pine Ridge, South Dakota. 50% survival rate. Over half the population has diabetes. Many suffer from drug and alcohol abuse. And the majority of them are white or Native American. Why haven't these people received help? There's so much attention to affirmative action and helping people in foreign countries get back on their feet. And I do commend that America, I do. But please do not ignore those struggling in Pine Ridge or in Appalachia, another grossly impoverished nation. Part of the problem is not the fact that America chooses to keep the rich, well, rich, but it systematically en ensures that the people at the bottom remain under the heels of the wealthy. The other part is that sadly, there seems to be this universally accepted morale that it's minorities who are impoverished. This masks the actual problem. The fact that Hispanic and African Americans may suffer from poverty is mere correlation, not causation. There's no proof that being African American, Asian American, Mexican, or any other ethnicity causes one to live in poverty. America has turned a blind eye. America has decided it can only take one problem at once, saying, gee, these black people are poor. Well, let's try affirmative action programs to move them up. No, that's not the problem. The problem is economic recession. The March on Washington, the Occupy Wall Street movement, the 99%, the minimum wage, even if you have an entire panel of Latino, Black, Hispanic, Asian, Filipino, Australian, Pakistani congressmen, it doesn't change the fact that these people were presented with such gracious opportunity that they, regardless of their skin color, stand above the rest of us. The wealthy can be anybody. It can be a black man, a white woman, an Asian man, a Hispanic woman. The fact remains that these people have been provided opportunity that others haven't. They were chosen to be icons. And honestly, if you're singled out and elected to a higher government position just because of your skin color, that's unfair. Who initiated that? A white man telling a black man that he could get him into power because he thought it would improve the image of America? I know plenty of hardworking black people, hardworking Hispanics. Hell, I work with the Chinese, the hardest working people I know. They don't need a wealthy white man to tell them they can make it. Let them be. Race is still a proportional issue. I'm well aware, but now the issue is spread to a class standing and has had tremendous impact on industries worldwide. Please start to pay attention to us, to the poor, to the middle class, and even to the wealthy. There's a war, an endemic war, that has caused confusion, protests, and grief among millions of Americans. It's nothing short of what happened 50 years ago, and it's getting much, much worse. That's all for this week's editorial. I'm Ashley Wolk. Shocking kills it real all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Clear. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shocking.
60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. At 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on October 15th in the Betty Tipton Room, Eastern will, be, Eastern will be holding its 21st annual Health, Wellness, and Benefits Expo. There will be over 50 health agencies, vendors, and representatives. The theme this year is Balancing Your Mind, Body, and Soul. The program will include demonstrations, performances, and free health screenings throughout the day. Eastern students and public are invited, and admission is free. Make sure to come out and support Eastern. In compliance with the Jean Cleary Act, the Eastern Police have released the annual crime report. News 22 reporter Brian Stoller has more. As of last week, Eastern's annual crime and safety report is now available through the Campus Police Department. This report contains statistics from 2010, 2011, and 2012. It covers crime, fire, and emergency response incidents for both on campus and off. For more information, we spoke to Lieutenant Madeira. The uh, Gene Clary Act requires all college and university police departments to uh, submit their crime reports by October 1st of every year. You can pick a copy up of the crime report at the police department in the lobby and it's also posted online. Be sure to pick up your copy of the campus crime report. Reporting from News 22, I am Brian Dostler. Thanks Brian. Be sure to stay informed with the help of the Eastern Police Department. For all prospective students, Eastern will be holding its annual open house this Sunday, October 13th, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. There will be tours, seminars, food, and many more activities for students and their families. It's a great way to learn more about the university and to see all of the opportunities it can offer you as Connecticut's only pub public liberal arts university. You will also be able to interact with already enrolled students. To register, visit easternfallopenhouse.evenbright.com. This upcoming Saturday, Eastern's very own West Indian Society will be holding their ninth annual Hot Shots competition. Eastern students can move out and participate and show off their all, all of their unique talents. The contest will be held in the Schaefer Auditorium on October 12th at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Admission is free for all Eastern students, but you must have your ID present with you. Guests have to pay $7. Come out and support your local classmates. This past Friday, students were delighted to take a trip down memory lane. Eastern's FAD committee put together a whole new world in honor of the kid in all of us. News 22 reporter Josh Hinton has more on the event. The trip, let's go check it out. At the Disney FAD event, Ariel makes you any balloon creation students can think of. And if balloons were anything, then you can get your name printed on your favorite Disney movie poster. But first, students had to wait in a long line. Students could have taken the opportunity to be in a carpet while having your favorite Disney songs play in the background, such as I'll Make a Man Out of You from Mulan and The Compossible Theme. We interviewed FAD coordinator Kim Green about what it's like coming up with a Disney theme. We choose to have a Disney theme because we meet systematically every week and we discuss exactly what the ECSU students want. And recently there's been a lot of Disney movies coming out and a lot of people really admire the Disney 
like phenomenon. So we just wanted to bring something organic and authentic, something like, like go like back to your childhood that you can relive it. Moon bounce, like and then we had also had like a poster sale or like the poster thing. So I think it's just more so we wanted the students to relive their childhood and have fun and come out on a Friday night. Bouncing around the bounce house was one of the most popular attractions for us college students. I know I had fun. And after students bounced around, they could rehydrate with some butterbeer. Just like a real wizard, Harry. Throughout the event, a raffle would occur for 20 minutes with prizes such as all Toy Story movies in a DVD set, princess gear, and Disney themed stuffed animals. We asked one of our Eastern students what her favorite part of the event was. My favorite part of the event has to be the jumping house. I had a splendid time because I felt like I was a child again. I had a lot of fun. I, ju I jumped with my friends. It was a great time. Well, that was it for the Disney Fat event. It, it was amazing to feel like a kid again. I felt like it's eight years old. It was just amazing. So that's it. Me, that's me, Josh Hempton, signing off for TV22, Akuna Matata. It looks like everyone had a great night. Be sure to check out Eastern's online calendar for upcoming Friday After Dark events. With all this studying for midterms, we could all use a little midnight snack break. A new Twitter account for the Dominoes near Eastern's campus has gone viral. At ECSU Dominoes has been hosting many different contests for students who participate in so they can win a free pizza and free food. Not only is a nice little fun break to take, but it can also be rewarding. Make sure all you Eastern Twitter users follow the Domino's account at ECSU Domino's and tweet at them so you too can win some free pizza. This past Saturday, October 5th, CAB hosted an outdoor concert on the web lawn. News 22 reporter Shelby Akers was there to check it out. On Saturday, local Chicago band Makeshift Prodigy visited Eastern's campus to perform in front of students on the web lawn. I stopped by to check it out. While students have been working hard this fall semester, four-man band Makeshift Prodigy has been busy on tour. The band has been traveling across the country for the past month, putting on shows for college students. We caught up with lead singer Anthony Bagnara and bass player Christian Kwiatkowski to get their take on the tour. This tour has been all college campuses, which is our first tour that's been that way. I think it's a great demographic for us. The kids have been really receptive and been about the interaction. Like we, we try to be ourselves every time we're talking to anyone pretty much. Uh, so everyone feels comfortable enough to come up and sit down and talk to us. The set list included both original songs and works from famous artists such as the Cranberries and the Counting Crows. The concert, hosted by CAB, gave students the chance to hang out, relax, and listen to some good music outside. The band is known for their original sound, energetic performance, and powerful lyrics. CDs and t-shirts were available for students to purchase after the concert. CAB worker Emily Bracken told us a little bit about the band and their tour. This was a trendsetter tour. It's with for bands. We go through concert ideas, and they kind of promote smaller bands that want to go big. Um, these partic particular guys is Makeshift Prodigy. They're from Chicago. Um, they're more well known in the Midwest, but they came over to the East Coast, and now they're trying to just promote themselves here. And we were helping with that. Hey, I'm Anthony, and I'm Christian. We are Makeshift Prodigy, and you're watching News 22. Well, it's been a beautiful fall day here at Eastern, and I've had the chance to enjoy some great music. From outside the web lawn, I'm Shelby Akers for News 22. Thanks, Shelby. Be sure to check out the online calendar of events for more upcoming cab events. And, and we'll be right back with this, week's after, with this week's sports after this short break. Today we gather as a nation and as an international community to recognize the selfless decision of one of the most influential women of our time. She's been recognized by religious figures and politicians around the world. To us, she's just Rachel. But to the rest of the world, she's the woman who, after having one too many drinks, chose not to drive home buzzed. Here today to honor Rachel is the family 
whose lives she spared. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is drunk driving. All right, guys, we gotta be smarter about what we bite on, okay? I want everyone to go outside. We're gonna run Red Rover on three. What about you, Tony? I'm gonna run around in circles, flap my arms, and make engine noises like this. <laughs> When it comes to playing, we kids are the pros. We're eating right, too. We fuel up. To play 60! If your school doesn't have a program, be a leader. Start one. Click today and join, join the movement. movement. And we're back with this week's sports. Women's field hockey looked for their first ever victory against Plymouth State University and fell just short with a score of 3-2. to two. Eastern sophomore Hannah Kaiser and freshman Ellie Walker scored both of Eastern's goals early on. However, the Warriors could not hold on to the lead. Kaiser is now two goals short of Eastern's season record for most goals scored in a single season. The Warriors are now 6-5 and five on the year and look for a win at UMass Dartmouth, who are defending LEC champions. Since losing their season opener, Eastern's men's soccer has been unbeaten in 10 straight outings after their double overtime tie to Wesleyan University. In an exciting match, senior forward Mitch Power scored the game-tying goal to lead to overtime. After two overtime periods, the match ended in a tie, and Eastern remains seventh overall in the Northeast region rankings. Eastern travels to the University of Southern Maine on Saturday at 3 p.m. for a Little East Conference matchup. Sticking with men's soccer, reporter Nick Akinfora got a chance to cover the game versus Salem State University. On Tuesday, September 24th, Eastern Connecticut men's soccer took on Salem State in a non-conference matchup. Eastern allowed Salem to put a shot on the net, which was the first time in over three full games. Eastern lowered its team's goals against average to .94 by recording its fourth shutout in its last five matches. Senior midfielder Mitch Power scored the only goal of the game, which ended up being his sixth career winning goal. It was a booming shot from the top of the box that allowed Eastern Connecticut to stretch out its unbeaten streak to six. Freshman forward Kyle Peterson also threatened several times for Eastern with four total shots. Eastern Connecticut now stands at 5-1-1 one one on the season. Thanks, Nick. Hopefully the Warriors can keep up their strong play this weekend. After coming off two strong victories at home, Eastern's women's soccer team fell to UMass Amherst on the road. Amherst tallied a total of 30 shots on goal and won the game 4-1 as Eastern scored its only goal with two minutes remaining. Eastern is now 6-5 on the year and they look to stay above 500. They are still in the hunt for the LEC Conference playoffs and need a victory against the University of Southern Maine this Saturday at home. This past weekend, Eastern hosted the 33rd annual Crabtree Classic Volleyball Tournament. I was there for News 22. On Saturday, October 5th, Eastern Connecticut hosted the 33rd annual Crabtree Classic in the Francis E. Geisel Gymnasium. Competing in the Crabtree Classic were Eastern Connecticut, UMass Dartmouth, Framingham State, and the University of New England. Eastern started off their day sweeping UMass Dartmouth three sets to none. Senior Nikki Gash, who represented Eastern on the all-tournament team, led the Warriors to the 39th win over UMass Dartmouth in their 42-match series. Gash had 10 of the team's 33 kills to go along with three blocks. Sophomore Allie Loopy dug up 21 balls and senior captain Aaron Miller had 15. Juniors Jess Patrizzi and Allie Henry combined for 27 assists. Eastern finished the tournament going 2-1 and, and defeating the University of New England and falling to Framingham State in five sets. Eastern Connecticut is now 9-10 and 10 on their season and 2-2 two and two in the Little East Conference.
congratulations to Eastern on a very successful day at home. In national news, for the first time since 2008, the Boston Red Sox have advanced to the American League Championship Series. In four games, the Red Sox defeated the Tampa Bay Rays to advance to play the winner of tonight's Game 5 between Oakland, the Oakland Athletics and the Detroit Tigers. The Red Sox are the second team to move beyond the divisional round after the Los Angeles Dodgers defeated the Atlanta Braves in four games. They look to face the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Championship Series. NFL owners gathered in Washington on Monday for fall meetings while across town, the Anita Indian Nation held a meeting to promote their Change the Mascot campaign. This campaign is in regard to the Washington Redskins' controversial name. President Barack Obama has said that he believes the Redskins should think about changing their name, while four out of five Americans do not believe their name should be changed. NFL spokesman Brian McCarthy has confirmed that a meeting between the NFL and Indian tribes have been scheduled for next month to further discuss this issue. The New York Giants fall to a stunning 0-5 record after Sunday's 31-26 loss against their division rival, the Philadelphia Eagles. The last time the Giants had a winless record throughout their first five games was 1987. Eli Manning threw three interceptions and had three intentional grounding penalties as he continues to struggle this season. To make matters even worse, their starting running back, David Wilson, was injured Sunday and his status will be updated week to week. The NFC East is not looking a whole lot better either. Against teams outside of their division, their combined record is a pitiful 2-11. and 11. Tonight, the Chicago Bears will be hosting the Giants, who are giving everything they can to get their first win. The New England Patriots came to a screeching halt against the Cincinnati Bengals as they were shut down 13-6. The loss was their first, and it also shattered Tom Brady's active touchdown per game streak of 52 games, only two short of the NFL record. The Patriots look to upset the undefeated New Orleans Saints at home. The tables are turning in New York as the Jets are now running the Big Apple. On Monday night in primetime, they upset the Atlanta Falcons 30-28 with a game-winning field goal kick by Nick Folk after a 53-yard drive by young quarterback Geno Smith. The Jets are 3-2 on the year and look to continue their success against the winless Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday. The Denver Broncos continued their undefeated streak Sunday against the Cowboys. The Cowboys gave the Red Hot Broncos a run for their money, leading the Broncos 14 to nothing in the first quarter and again 48 to 41 in the fourth quarter. But of course, Peyton Manning did not let the team down. They came back to win it 51 to 48. This was the closest Broncos victory this season and it broke their streak of winning the past 15 games by at least 7 points. But it does not look like the Broncos are losing anytime soon, seeing as this Sunday they are the biggest favorite for the NFL game since the merger in 1970. They are favored to win by 28 points against the 0-5 Jacksonville Jaguars. That's all for sports. I'm Tyler Smith for News 22. Thanks for watching. If you want to see any of our past shows, go to tv22.blip.tv. I'm Aaron Fitzsimons. And I'm Brian Frankovich. Have a good night.